Okay, grace, peace, and mercy from God the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Just a quick message for a hot sunny day today. The greatest miracle, you can follow along uh, if you miss any of our services on any social media. We're out there and all the music is recorded as well. Uh, next series coming up in September is Getting in the Game and that will be a lot of fun. So getting back to uh, September, getting in the game. We are still finishing up our series here, the following in the footsteps of Jesus, what that means to follow the footsteps of Jesus, what that means in our lives. So just take a moment and think of we're doing that. And people have been doing that for 2,000 years and will be continuing to do that. Think about all the miracles in the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament. Which one would you rank as the greatest miracle? I think one of them, maybe not the top one in your group of miracles, is the miracle of remembering and not remembering. This miracle of remembering and not remembering. Somehow God knows that we don't choose to have good memories all the time. And I'm not talking about the memory of, oh, I forgot what my password is, I can't get into this uh, program, or where did I park the car, it was over here, it was over here, they all look alike. I'm not talking about that kind of superficial, surface kind of memory. I'm talking about the real purpose of memory. And the real purpose of memory is to change our lives. To change our lives, that's the purpose of memory, to take something we've discovered or found out or pondered or come across and use that to reshape our lives. That's the real purpose of memory. Remember back in the, uh, the very, very old days in the garden, there's this little conversation that went on between God and Adam. And it was like this. In fact, this one was even not with Adam. This one was with Eve, which makes it even more interesting. And the serpent was talking to Eve and said, Eve, cutie pie, come here for a minute. I'm going to show you something. Did God really say to you, you can't eat of every tree of the garden? And so Eve's looking around and she sees a snake and she says, well, let me think about that. Um, let me tax my memory. And a woman answers the serpent and says, well, we can eat all the fruit of the trees except the middle one. It's the middle one we can't eat from. We can't eat it or touch it. And that's it. The middle one. And that was her memory of this order from God, the middle one. But what the real order was, it didn't come to Eve, it came to Adam even before Eve came into existence. It came to Adam and says, Adam gave the person, God gave the person Adam, says you can, you can have this garden. Look what I made for you. I planted this cool, cool garden. It's got animals and plants and everything. It's a gift to you. Here you go. But there's one tree, and this tree kind of holds it all together, and it's kind of going to be toxic for you. It's like nuclear reactor or something like Stay from the one that we call the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That one you may not eat of, but the rest of this whole world is yours. It's a gift. Here you go. Enjoy. And God called this tree the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And it said right after that, you're not to eat of it, because the day you will eat, It'll become certain that you will die in Adonai. The Lord said, it isn't good for Adam to be alone. And so right after he gives him this garden, he makes him a companion. And God caused a deep sleep to fall on the person while he was sleeping. He took one of the ribs out and closed the place up. And he took it from his flesh and rib. He made the woman, a person. And he brought this woman, this woman person, to the man person. And, said, and Adam said, at last, bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She will be called woman because she was taken out of man. And this is another gift that God gave to Adam. The whole world, everything in it. All he can eat, all the animals to play with. And then a companion, woman. There's only one commandment. Don't eat of the knowledge, tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Well, that kind of got translated to uh, the middle tree. Don't eat from the middle tree. That's what Eve remembers, that big, long speech. That important thing, kind of important, and I guess it could have kind of been between God and Adam. Okay, did you get this now? Don't eat from the tree of garden of knowledge of good and evil. And Adam would say back, okay, I can eat of all the trees, especially the one of knowledge of it. No, 
That's when you can't eat it. Don't eat of, you can eat of anything, just don't eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Okay, I can eat of all the trees, but I can only eat the lower fruit of the knowledge of, no, no, not that at all. It's don't eat of the knowledge of good and evil tree. Okay, I can eat all the trees, except only on Tuesdays and Fridays I can eat of the tree of knowledge. Of, no, no, Adam, you're just not getting here. Don't eat of that one at all. And he forgot to tell his wife because it was just pointed out to her it was the middle tree. That's what she remembers, the middle tree. And they completely didn't remember that one correctly, and that began the story that we're in right now of not remembering. And, well, the snake was there, and everything broke loose. And after that, it says, this is why. A man will leave his father and mother and stick to his wife. They will become one flesh because they didn't remember. The story of a, a man who liked to fly his plane all the time and he had this great idea. He and his wife were going to go on his vacation. He says, honey, I got this great idea. I'm going to take the wheels off the plane and we'll put the pontoons on it so we can land this plane near our vacation spot. He says, what a great idea. She says, yeah, that'd be cool. And then, and then we can use the plane where we want. We can soar around the islands and everything. I can land it right in front of our, our little place we're staying by the beach, and that would be so great. He did, did that. And so he's flying around and practicing. He's got his pontoons, and he's going to land right in front of a, the, the place they had their cottage was. And so he's talking to his wife on the, on the radio, and she goes, well, how's it look up there? Good. Well, how the pontoons feel? Feels great and everything. I never know the difference between having wheels and the pontoons. It's just flying so smooth and so great. And she, and she goes, well, I'm getting near the airport. I'm getting ready to land now. And she goes, <coughs> airport, airport, pull up, pull up. And she goes, why, why, pull up. You don't have any wheels. He goes, I forgot. And so he pulls up. And he goes, wow, what a close one that was. He was going to land his plane on the airstrip. And he forgot he didn't have any wheels. He had pontoons. So he goes and he makes a nice little landing up in the water and lands it out and opens the door and steps out and falls right in the water. Forgot on both ends. And we are so quick to remember and not remember. In fact, God tries to tell us all through the Old Testament. It even gives us times to remember. When Moses was bringing the people up to the bank of the Jordan River and says, you know what, I can't go with you, but when you cross over the Jordan River, do this. When you get into this promised land, this great, beautiful land, you're out of the desert now and you build homes and you raise cattle and sheep and animals and build houses and have this wonderful, wonderful life. Remember what the Lord told us, commandment number three, keep the Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath. Because that's the only way you're going to remember God. You've got to keep the Sabbath. You've got to remember. And they swore that they would do that. And they crossed the Jordan River into the promised land to keep the Sabbath. Shug Man here is probably one of the most famous missionaries that happened in the 20th century. He has his own day on the calendar that is celebrated April 23rd, 1960, when he died. And uh, was a young man who was raised in Tokyo and became a Christian as a teenager. Toyoko Kawaga. And uh, he was, well, raised as a Christian in a Buddhist land of Japan. He came over to Princeton and studied, but instead of staying in America, he went back to live in the slums of his neighborhoods in Tokyo and spent his life, instead of being a college professor, spent his life living in the slums, just like Mother Teresa did in India, spent his life in the slums in Japan. President Roosevelt knew him by name. He was awarded the highest Medal of Honor by the Emperor of Japan. But nobody even knows who he is. He was a quiet man, but a missionary for Christ because he remembered that he became a Christian and he remembered who he was in Christ. Toyohiko Kagawa, April 23rd, 1960. Next to Mother Teresa, probably the greatest missionary of the 20, 20th century. There's a book written in 1958. It was predated the Vietnam War when we're going into the Vietnam War. It's called The Ugly American. Talked about American relations in the Southeast. Made a movie by Marlon Brando in 1963. There's a scene where one of, the, one of the women, Esther, was walking along, noticing the older women 
were sweeping, and their brooms were only about this big. And so they were sweeping every day, but through the years of sweeping in rooms this big, they became bent over, and they never could stand up for the hours and hours they spent sweeping with these brooms that were only this high, and they couldn't have big broomsticks because there was no wood for that. And so she and her husband went out and got some reeds, some tall plants, and started fashioning to the brooms and would walk into the town showing the women, if you put reeds on the end of your brooms, you can sweep like this. And nobody paid attention to her until many years later she got a letter from one of the women in the country. He says, you won't remember us, but we were the bent over women. The woman that you showed us about the tall brooms. And we remember you because we made a shrine in your honor. We want you to come and visit because you made us stand up straight and we're no longer bent over women. If you think about it, that's kind of the way God might see us sometimes, as being people who kind of get so used to doing things like this, which is so painful, and God's got to be saying, why are you guys doing that? How can I get you guys to stand up and be people and not bent over in so much pain? And so he sent Jesus into the world to teach us, to tell us that we didn't have to live bent over lives anymore, but we would be forgiven and made whole. The greatest miracle may be to stand up, to stand up and be people of God. There's a story about a man who was late for his airplane, leaving the hotel, checking out and everything, and just running, literally running, getting out of his hotel and catching the elevator down and pushing the button, and there was, it just wouldn't close. And so he says, come on, come on, elevator, I'm going to miss this plane. And all of a sudden, he's, he's yelling, and he's, he's just getting really angry until this man comes walking in with a white cane. And he comes in the elevator, and the blind man said to him, good morning, sir. How's your day going? And this man says, well, I'm just angry. I'm going to miss my plane. I know it. And the blind man says, well, for me, it's good to be grateful. It's good to be grateful. I think there's something we can be grateful today. Something we can see even if we see it dimly and not so clearly anymore. The gift of God that's been given to us. And if we remember what God has done for us, it'll change our lives. Because it's not just looking back it's changing our future if we remember to stand up and be people of God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We receive our tithes and offerings.